Hi, brothers and sisters of Local 88. It's Alex Balicki, Skilled Trades Rep. Uh, I'd just like to apologize to start with for being less uh, polished than my two predecessors on this video. This is my first time, so please bear with me. I'm not used to reading from a script. I usually talk on the fly. Um, before I start with uh, the COVID update and the plan update, I'd just like to thank everybody uh, for all the calls and well wishes that I received while I was off with my health issue. For you that uh, don't know, I was given some news in January about a serious issue that I had to deal with uh, immediately, and I've been out of the plant for a long time. So once again, thanks for all your well wishes, and uh, they were greatly appreciated. Uh, I found out in January that I was uh, going to be off for quite some time. I had a trip planned to go to Florida with my family. Uh, we had to cancel that right away. John Arthur, your alternate, was uh, supposed to be up for me for a couple of weeks. It turned out to be a lot longer, so I apologize for the short-term uh, notice for that. John, I know that uh, you did a great job while I was off with uh, some serious issues that you had to deal with. I had some members uh, call me and uh, want me to express uh, their uh, thanks for everything that you did for them. You too, uh, Daryl Van Slake, you were up there while John was off. We had to do this by committee while I was off unexpectedly, but I appreciate everything that both of you did. Um, while I was off, it took me a while to let uh, Mike and uh, John know that I was off uh, and I was going to be off for a long time, simply because I didn't know uh, what my outcome was going to be for a while. Uh, so uh, I appreciate all the, the support that was given by both of them. And uh, knowing that John uh, and Daryl had you guys in good hands made my recovery a lot easier. Uh, for the first point I'd like to make in the update, uh, let me start uh, by talking about the sub-benefits or the lack of sub-benefits that you've been not receiving. Uh, I know Joe had spoke with it in length earlier, so I won't get too much involved, but suffice it to say it's been a moving target all along. We've had great difficulty in uh, securing that. We still haven't been successful to this day. Uh, please understand that it's our expectation that you will receive your full sub-benefits at some time. We just can't guarantee when that's going to happen. Uh, it's been a moving target. I've been involved in some conference calls and uh, meetings about it and trying to talk with people uh, to give updates has been very frustrating because things change by the hour, and uh, it hasn't gone well to this point, but please look forward to getting paid at some point. Uh, we had our first returning trades uh, back in the plant this Monday, uh, approximately 50 in number. Uh, it's been communicated to me that we can expect all the trades back to work uh, by the beginning of June, including the apprentices. I was in talk with the company uh, about the next set of recalls yesterday, uh, we didn't conclude that until late yesterday afternoon. Uh, the company was having an uh, issue with uh, obtaining parts to further start the uh, restart of the plant. So we weren't sure up until late yesterday afternoon if anyone was going to get recalled back. And in fact, if we were going to let uh, the people go that were back in the plant this week. So it has been a very frustrating experience. Um, but please understand that we're uh, negotiating on your behalf to make sure that everything's done properly. Uh, myself and Mike Van Bokel have been in discussions with the company to ensure that all recalls go according to the contract. Uh, for trades, specifically, the company has 11 days to go outside of plant seniority, meaning by department, by trade, in order to start the various departments to uh, facilitate the startup of the plant. Uh, that has been an issue going forward but please be assured that uh, we are going by trade seniority plant-wide in the recalls. There'll be another approximately 46 coming back next week, uh, 27 electricians and 19 millwrights. You should receive a call, and I know it's late notice, but by the end of day today, uh, if you're coming back uh, next week, they'll give you your shift and your start time when they call you. Uh, I understand people's frustrations, with the lack of information that's been given out regarding recalls, shift times, et cetera. However, things have been very fluid and details from one hour to the next change dramatically. 
Uh, many recall dates have been made and canceled in the past weeks, causing you a lot of confusion and, and frustration and stress uh, for that. I'm sorry, but uh, it's been an adventure getting back to getting the plant started. Uh, in the words of one of our great retired millwrights, Roy Daly, uh, I can tell you that most of the information that I've been given has been a definite possibility of a confirmed maybe. It wasn't until uh, late yesterday afternoon that we uh, came up with the start times and shifts for the trades when we get back next week. Uh, to let you know, uh, it will be normal A shift on days for the trades. We go A, B, and C, unlike production. Uh, our start times will be modified somewhat to accommodate our need to uh, support production. So when production runs midnights and day shift, our start time for midnights will be 10 p.m. till 6, afternoons 2 p.m. till 10 p.m., days 6 until 2. That's uh, when it's days and midnights for production. When we go days and afternoons, it'll be midnights 11 p.m. as normal till 7 a.m., 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. The only change with afternoon shift, it will be a one-hour gap and it will go from 4 until 12. I know it's a little confusing, it's a little bit of a change, but uh, I believe they're necessary to keep everybody safe and to support the production needs. Mutual shift change for the trades is the next issue I'd like to talk about. We will continue with our mutual shift change. Unlike production, where they will be rotating layoffs, it is the expectation that all of our trades will be back by June, as I said. There is no reason that we can't continue with our shift trades, so we will continue to do so. One of the biggest changes that you're going to see when you come back into the plant is the entry procedure and the safety protocols that have put it, been put in place for you to come into work. These are there for everyone's safety. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, take a few minutes to let you know that when you uh, arrive to the plant, it's going to take a few minutes to get inside. Uh, so please be aware of that. As you line up, be mindful of your uh, social distancing of six feet. We want to make sure that uh, we don't spread any uh, virus conditions or illnesses that way. Uh, you will be asked some questions as you're in line concerning possible COVID symptoms. Uh, if you can say no to all those questions, you will continue to an area where you will sanitize your hands they will have an uh, information session when you come back to work. It'll last a couple hours approximately. They'll go over everything that I'm going to discuss to make sure that everybody understands why we're doing what we're doing and the need for it. So once you uh, sanitize your hands, you'll be given a mask to wear. You'll put that mask on. Uh, you will then proceed to a uh, station where they will take your uh, temperature reading with an infrared camera. Our skilled trades uh, technical trainer, Jim Bowen, has developed a course for the individuals that will be taking your imaging to make sure that uh, you don't have a temperature. Uh, we'd like to thank Jim for all the involvement there. He did that because he understands the need for the safety requirements to be as accurate as possible. Those cameras, you just don't pick them up, take an image, and understand what you're doing. So there was some training involved given to the people so that we're relatively secure in the temperatures that we're looking at. Uh, if you are successful there, you'll just proceed into work as normal. Wearing the masks is vital. Now calling them PPE I think is an understatement. Personal protective equipment. The masks are there not just for you but for your coworkers and everyone else that has family members and anything else. We certainly don't want an outbreak in the plant your health is paramount, as everyone is. Please understand that they are a little bit uncomfortable, but they're there for a reason. We need to wear them. We need to protect ourselves. To a lesser degree, uh, another reason to wear the mask and do all the protocols that are necessary is to make sure that we don't have an outbreak in the plant, causing us to shut down at a loss of jobs for everyone again. I'm sure we've all had enough of that. We want to get back to work and support our families. 
So I know Chris Wilson was very involved in the protocols uh, as far as making sure that our union requirements and people's requirements were, were met. And I'd also like to thank him as well. So if you have any questions or concerns, please call me on my cell phone. I believe everybody has the number. They must, I received quite a few calls and texts yesterday about some issues. Uh, so I know that most people have my number. If you don't, please get it. So in closing, please be safe, uh, healthy, and we'll see you back at the plant very soon.